In this video, I want to talk about relationships in Power BI. Because the moment you have more than one table in Power BI, you will see how crucial relationships are. Because we need to connect these tables with each other to actually tell Power BI how they work together. And also to make all this nice interactivity possible that actually everyone wants when they use Power BI. I want to talk to you about what relationships are, how we can create them, what options we have, and what the impact is when we actually have a wrong relationship in our model. So let's get started. Relationships in Power BI are very important because if you don't have relationships between tables, like in this example, where we have no relationship between the employee and the fact table, this means that the data won't probably react with each other. For example, if we put it in a visual. And here's the tricky part. Power BI will still make it possible to put that information in one visual. I can show you a visual where we see the sales by employee. we have two employees and if we look at this i mean maybe they always have the same sales these two employees but if we know the data we of course know this does not make sense so what's happening here is we have this table employee and it has no relationship to the fact table where we actually have our sales information so instead of providing us with an error power bi provides us with a visual that does not make sense which also means if you have no idea about how your data should look like and you have no idea about relationships relationships, it could very well be that you just report wrong data all the time. Relationships are crucial in your data model because that information should actually look like this. And that makes much more sense, doesn't it? So how can we fix that relationship? In Power BI, that's very simple. You go to your model view and you can actually track and drop columns on each other. So if we look at our employee table, we see the employee ID. And in our fact table, we also see an employee ID. So I can just click on the employee ID in the employee table and track and drop it on the employee ID in our fact table. And then a new window will pop up. And that's actually that window you look at the moment. And here Power BI asks you again, which two tables do you want to connect with each other? So if you by accident track and drop the wrong information and then you can still change it. And Power BI also asks you which columns do actually have the relationship. And then again, if track and drop didn't work properly for you and you dropped it to the wrong column, you can still change it. Just click on it and the two gray marked columns will be the columns that will be connected. And then below you see you can choose between cardinality and cross filter direction. These two are very important. So it's important for you to know what the impact is of choosing them. If you choose the wrong one, you may have a relationship in your model, but it's still not working the way it should work. If we click on cardinality, we get four options. Actually, these are three options. Two of them are kind of the same, but other direction. We get the many to one, one to one, one to many, and many to many. What do they mean? Many to one and one to many are actually the most common ones. And if we look at one to many, it means one employee in the dimension table can have many sales in the fact table. So in the fact table where we have all our transactions, that employee ID would pop up more than once because an employee makes many sales a day, hopefully. So that means the first table at the top would be employee where we have that one connection. And the second table would be the fact table where there are many employee IDs in. So if you wonder what does many to one mean then? Well, that would mean that the first table at the top would be actually the fact table and the second one at the bottom would be the employee table. Then it would be many, the fact to one, the dimension. So that depends on which of the tables you chose first in Power BI. And you can, of course, manually reselect them. And then there's one to one. And that means that two tables have the same unique IDs and they match each other. And if I see one to one relationships, I wonder if that couldn't be better be one table instead of two tables because if the level of detail is the same why do we have separate tables so you can think about it and i created another video about making joints and joining tables with each other i will put the link in the description make sure if you want to learn more about this to have a look there and then we have many to many that one is tricky that actually means we have two tables and there's no unique 
key. Like in both tables, there are duplicate keys. And Power BI just simply does not know how to really match them because on both sides, in both tables, we have no unique keys. Be very sure that is something you want because this messes with your filters. It's very tricky. And in most cases, it means there's something up with your data because at least in most dimension tables that I work with, I expect a unique ID. So if I don't have unique IDs in my dimension tables, I always wonder what's going on. Is that the purpose? And I know for some data visualization stuff that I'm also doing, we need these kind of relationships to make it work. These are kind of workarounds, but most of the time I'm very cautious if I see many too many relationships. So next we have the cross filter direction. And here we can choose single or both. Don't just click both to be sure to have everything included because this is actually the direction Power BI is filtering. If we use a star schema, and I recorded a video about star schemas before, if you don't know what that is, have a look there. We most certainly would use a single direction from the dimension table to the fact table, which means if we have like a filter on any of our dimensions, like employee name, this would filter the fact table and would show us all the sales, for example, of that employee. We don't want to click on something in the fact table that then filters the employees. That's not how we want that to work because both like the filter direction both means that it doesn't matter which table you click on it will filter each other and you need to be very sure that is what you want to do because normally you want your dimensions to filter your fact and not your fact to filter your dimensions so summarizing this it's very important that you have relationships in your model if you have more than one table, because otherwise filtering, interactivity, all these kind of things will not work. Use a one to many relationship with one in the dimension, many in the fact table, whenever you can. Be very careful with many to many relationships and stick with the single filter direction unless you have very specific reasons to do otherwise. And of course, don't forget to actually activate your relationship. And this setting should be actually pre-selected in Power BI. If it's not, make sure to actually activate your relationship to make sure that it works. And an active relationship, you can see actually the solid line in your model. So please make sure that you check your relationships in your data model. Make sure that there are relationships between the tables and that they all make sense. Like I showed you before, Power BI is not actively warning you that there's no relationship or that it's a wrong relationship. It will even visualize the data. So something like sales by employee actually looks kind of okay if you don't know that this is not the information you're actually looking for and it should actually look like the example below so really make sure that you check these things i hope this helps and if you have any questions let me know